Florida was fucked long before the demons clawed their way up from hell, violating that earthly boundary by way of newly formed fault lines carved into the tectonic plates. All thanks to rampant, unchecked, offshore drilling and fracking, because, of course, oil needed to be the Sunshine State's primary energy export. And then there were the seasonal swarms of Policia nearctica, locally known as love bugs. The black insects earned their nickname by buzzing through the air, joined at the rear. Originally, the swarms were little more than an aesthetic nuisance to drivers up and down the interstate, damaging automotive paint jobs and driving seasonal fluctuations in the sales of windshield washer fluid. But then, scientists attempted to cull the love bug population and reduce the swarms by introducing a virus that would modify the genetic code of the dominant female love bug. The genetic modification was designed to cause the bug to be self-limiting and unable to survive to adulthood. It was the same technique that had been successfully used on mosquitoes, but in Florida, even nature has its own rules. The genetic modification made the love bug swarms denser and longer lasting, turning the insect guts, that minor aesthetic nuisance that pitted paint jobs across the state, toxic. The seasonal swarms swept the state, forcing people indoors for months at a time. As soon as one swarming population was brought under control, another spun up. After two years of devastating the Florida economy and a non-unsubstantial but criminally undercounted and underdocumented human death toll, the swarms began migrating north. As the United States struggled under the invasive swarms, what was left of Florida hoisted and readily embraced the rebel flag. Less than a decade after the first genetically modified Policia Nearctica was released into the Everglades, Florida seceded from the nation, forming its own republic with Alabama, Louisiana, and Texas. Over the course of another two decades, the United Republic of Florida made overtures, compelling offers, and direct nuclear-powered threats to Cuba. When the newly formed volcano 80 miles north of Havana erupted, an invading force from the United Republic of Florida swept in, not unlike their Policia Nearctica forebears, and seized control of the island country. Eventually, a universal truth persisted. No matter how bad things got, life went on. Large sections of the population died out, but life went on. Jobs were lost, but life went on. Rampant expansion of commercial development continued to decimate the ecosystem, but life went on. Political leadership had long since turned fascist with an obsessive, long-standing war on drugs. While divorce was outlawed, part of the affirmation of the one-man, one-woman marriage law, prostitution was tacitly legalized, paving the way for a booming brothel trade throughout the Republic and providing cover for an equally booming sex trafficking trade. But life went on. Floridians adapted. And for those who didn't adapt, suicide became a compelling option. Politicians stigmatized the poor and less fortunate, calling them drags on the economy and bad investments for the Republic's dwindling welfare programs. It was cheaper to make cyanide available as an over-the-counter purchase at every drugstore and pharmacy throughout the United Republic of Florida. The rate of suicide 
exploded. And life went on. Except for where it didn't. Welcome to Florida. Florida.